today we are talking about indirect proofs. And like before, I will begin with a definition. In an indirect proof, you assume the opposite of the conclusion, then you demonstrate that this assumption leads to a contradiction. That sounds pretty fancy, but it's not that bad. Let's start off with a multiple choice question. Your multiple choice question is, in what year was a U.S. president born? Okay. Even I, a non-history buff, can get this right. If there's, a, if, if there's a correct answer, I think we can get this right. Okay. Our choices are A, 1492, B, 1676, C, 1809, and D, 1979. Okay. We're going to do this indirectly. Assume that A is true. If 1492 is the correct answer, then the president U.S. has around 1776. Uh, okay, that's not going to work. 1492, Columbus show, you know, ocean blue. Yeah, da, da, da. Okay, uh, so that's not going to work. 1676, and once again, the nation's not around. George Washington's our first president, and he wasn't 100 years old. So that one's out. Then I've got him down to two. Uh, 1809, possible. Don't know for sure. 1979, well, what? No, is that possible? 1979, uh, it's 2014. Let's see. Someone born in 1979 would be how old now? Uh, let's see. Even actually, you have to be 35 years old, correct? And this one would make you. Well, he'll definitely be too young. So D is going to be out. All right. So the only answer, if there's a correct answer here, is C. So this one must be. By process of elimination, I have proven that this is the only one that's true. Now, do I know which one it is? I do. But do you? So, they, yes, as a matter of fact, there was a U.S. president born in 1809. And if you are a history buff, and you use your logic, you could probably figure out which president it was. Which one? Which one? Which president? Now, don't go Googling this. Use some logic. You're going to know that he's going to be around 40, 45 years old, maybe. Uh, add some time frame there. Then what happened in the U.S. around that time frame? That should tell you which president it was. And I'll tell you his birthday is in February of 1809, February 12th to be exact. You can Google that. Okay, so let's do an indirect proof using logic. Here we go, a premises, R. If R, then S. If not R, then not P, and P. And our conclusion is S. Now, an indirect proof is nothing more than a different way of arriving at the conclusion. We can we have in our bag of tools we have a direct proof, we have a conditional proof, and now we're going to have an indirect proof. This one cannot be done conditionally because there is no antecedent. There's just a conclusion. So we have to do an indirect proof. We must have the antecedent and the consequent. We prove that we we show we assume that the antecedent is true, then we arrive at the conclusion. I don't have that. So either direct or indirect for this one are only choices. Um, in an indirect proof, like a conditional, we start off with a sentence. And we're going to start off with an assumption. And we're going to start off with the opposite of the conclusion. And what is the opposite of the conclusion? Well, if the conclusion is S, our opposite of con the conclusion is not S. So, like the conditional proof, we have an extra bit of information, and now we just go through the step by step like we would a direct proof. Step two, I look for something that has an, that not S would help me with. Uh, I have an R than S. I pull that out. That's a premise.
I can put those two together, giving me not R. That's modus tollens. I then look for something not R, off. I have another premise there that says if not R, then not P. That's my premise. I put those two together, I end up at not P. That's using modus ponens this time. And like the last time in my last video, I could have done logic, law of contrapositive anytime I want to. In any conditional statement, I can switch around the order and negate both of them. Uh, now I have not P. And then, oh wait, there's another premise that says P. Right now, I have a contradiction. I have that P is true and not P is true. Both of those cannot be true. It cannot be uh, the case that both of these are happening. All right? So that's my contradiction. So I end up with a line, a sentence. And I'm going to write, but lines 5 and 6 contradict each other therefore the assumption not s is false and s is true. But lines 5 and 6 contradict each other, therefore the assumption not S is false, and S is true. Therefore S. I'm done. So I started off with a the opposite of the conclusion, but by, by using my logical statements and my reasoning I came up with a contradiction, and it could be anything. I could have contradicted. It could have been uh, R, then R, not R. It could be any two things that directly contradict each other. And once I hit a contradiction, it didn't have to be two lines that are next to each other, then my assumption's false, and therefore it's the opposite of my assumption. Okay? We hope we'll do a lot more with that uh, tomorrow. And... The more you do, the easier it gets. Okay? See you soon.